Hello guys, I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. If you're watching this by the time of release, I just want to wish you a very happy new year. I did a video about a month ago uh, covering my rewiring of the annunciators in my cockpit and uh, a change in interface boards where I had to redo the LEDs and all my annunciators in the main instrument panel. And that has taken quite a long time, but that project also escalated into not just rewiring the uh, annunciators, but also rewiring the switches because the, and now the interface boards are now located at a different physical place in the cockpit, so the wires were too short or too long. That project then escalated into, well, if I'm rewiring things, I might as well just make it better. Now, bear in mind, the main instrument panel is Mine, at least, was the very first thing that I made. It's nine years old by now, and what I made of solutions nine years ago, I have nine years of knowledge in what works and what doesn't work. And back then, I used Dupont wires like these, and they just come loose at one point. So now I'm changing to DB9 plugs, so DB15, and everything from here on should be enclosed in a box so that you don't have loose wires. Also, before my wiring, I'll just go the shortest route, so from the panel to the interface board, if it's straight through the air, I just have a wire going through the air. Now, I'm much more aware of tugging things along the side and uh, tightening them up so that they don't come loose. But I went from just a bit of rewiring to um, promising myself to redo all the panels back sides here with DB9 plugs. Furthermore, my uh, main instrument panel is the very first thing that I made. It is nine years old now, and I've been uh, moving to a new house, so it's been carried around into a truck, un unloaded from the truck, onto my new cockpit. I've been uh, changing the monitors, so um, I've wriggled them out. And when I started nine years ago, I used what I had available, and for my gear lever, I actually used a broomstick. But then a few months ago, I bought a new gear lever, thought perhaps it's time for an upgrade. And when I tried to mount this into the cockpit, it didn't fit. I couldn't make a snug fit towards the panel. I was a bit puzzled by that. I thought, isn't this the correct 15 degrees? So what, what's wrong there? Well, this is of course the correct 15 degrees, but it turned out that my main instrument panel had come loose at the bottom. It was more sloping at a 20 or 25 degree angle, so it couldn't fit this. And that, just kind of tipped the iceberg for me because then I had to, to, to make some kind of mount and tug it onto again so that it would be the correct 15 degrees. So by now I had all the panels out more or less because I had to access the annunciators. I promised myself that I would want to remake the back, the connectors, and I need to, to, to make some supports for the main instrument panel so that it could fit uh, at the 15 degrees again. And that for me was just like, okay, let me just redo the whole thing. There were there was a few things that I wasn't satisfied with. And uh, that's why I decided to redo the whole main instrument panel. And I'm in the middle of that process right now. This is what it looks like today. You can see the captain's side has gone and is about to be replaced. I'm uh, replacing it with my beloved foam again. Uh, I considered changing to metal and make a metal frame instead of this foam. But if you get something wrong and want to edit something, it's very difficult with the metal frame. You need to get it right the first time. With this, you can just take a Stanley knife and cut a bit off if, if, if you want to change something. If you want to get those extra uh, annunciators up here, just take a Stanley knife and make a hole and put the announce shader in. It's so easy to work with. It is flexible though. Uh, you see here, I'm able to bend it a bit. But if you put some wooden supports on, on the sides here, this is very sturdy and it's not gonna move anywhere. So after nine years, I would still recommend this Fomalux. A few other things that I like to upgrade is my screen monitors, uh, screen frames. Back when I started, I'm, I was using 19 degrees, 19 inch monitors and they are just a bit short here on the side, so you need to sacrifice like a centimeter on each side. But now I'm using a 22 inch monitor that goes all the way over here. So using 3D print, I was able to print some uh, nice large screen frames that's more the correct size than what I have now. Furthermore, on my original panel, I made it the correct height, which means it ends around here. Well, 
The monitors go further down, so I've always had a bit of light coming through from down here from the monitors, so I've made it a bit lower so that the light will be blocked by the main instrument panel. Hopefully I'll be able to put panels in this within the next couple of days and mount it back into the cockpit. Another thing that I've been working on, or try, I've, another thing that I've decided to change is my faceplates from these 30 degree angles to these 45 degree angles. It has no function, it's just the visuals. This is like the real aircraft. But when I started the project nine years ago, I bought these instead because one, they're cheaper. It was actually a few euros cheaper to buy this instead of this. And furthermore, the rotary switches are cheaper in the 30 degree version. It's only around two or three euros, whereas the 45 degree ones, they are seven or eight euros each. So changing from 30 degree to 45 degree on the main instrument panel actually stood me in around 100 euros for just some visual. One of the reasons that this project has taken so long is actually this panel. The auto brake panel has taken forever uh, because I would like it to be a bit more re realistic than what I had before. And that includes a pull to turn function on the auto brake. You can turn it from off one, two, three, but you're not able to turn it to maximum unless you pull out the switch and continue turn. It's a safety feature. And I've used a lot of time trying to 3D print, design and 3D print a, uh, a switch that could do that. And finally I've succeeded. So I'm gonna mount that. And over here, this is a very special one. At least to my knowledge, uh, you don't have an encoder in the aircraft. You have a, the option of turning it one or two times to the right or to the left. And then when you release the knob, it returns back to spring turns, return, spring loaded, returns back to center. So if you turn it two times, it changed by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And if you go back just to one, you go 51, 52, 53, release it, and it goes back to center. That has taken a very, very long time to prototype. Design it, print it, see what was wrong, redesign it, print it again. It's taken uh, two months almost to do these. That's why it's taking taking me such a long time. But now they're done, I'm gonna do two separate videos about them and you're able to download the files from my website, Builder Boeing, and you can have a go at it yourself. So I was hoping to be able to finish this main instrument panel project uh, this year, but it's New Year's Eve tomorrow and I've not even started on making the panels yet. So it's gonna take uh, a bit into 2023, which will postpone the other projects I had, but Hopefully I'll be finished within just beginning of 2023, able to fly again. I'll look forward to that. These are the reasons I changed my, uh, my I redid my main instrument panel. I'm Peter from Builderboy. I wish you all a happy, happy new year and you guys take care.